Well, when I came in here with my agent, it took me about two minutes, such a small place. It took me about two minutes to make a decision that I would like to buy it. I was attracted by the fireplace immediately. It's um, just such a beautiful volume. It's so, got such a vertical, linear feel to it. Although it's covered in gold leaf, um, it's a pretty bold statement. You know, it does not seem over the top at all and just seems to work really well. The beams were painted violet. I thought it was kind of odd and I didn't care for it at first, but uh, to my surprise, I grew to love it really quickly. Part of the remodel, I had the house pretty much rewired. The lighting really needed an upgrade. It was um, really the weak spot in the overall design, uh, very 1950s. The kitchen is pretty much original because we've got the cork floor, original Formica counters. I refinished the cabinets. They had kind of a stain on them. Uh, in fact, I actually color matched the original olive stain, but of course, it doesn't look like it because it's a different product. I'd seen several examples in architectural magazines and on Howes where they would have one wall that was really red, you know, like modernist places. I thought that worked really beautifully, you know. It just had some real colour in there. I removed the bookshelves, which were like 12 feet long and fit built in right underneath the windows, and enabled me to bring in a Danish dining table with uh, leaves that could be pulled out. It can seat 10 people easily. That works really well, and it kind of goes in roughly the same area where bookshelves were. When House did the article originally, I've got like 120 comments, and uh, quite a few people were upset about removing the bookshelves, and I hadn't thought it would be such a big deal. I actually didn't research, I just, you know, came up with a window idea. I'd seen something similar on one or two houses in the Oakland Hills. I talked to an, a rider who specializes in mid-century modern, and uh, he came up for a look and uh, you know, was telling about the windows. He said, well, if Henry Hill, the original architect, had done it, he would just have a single pane of glass up at the top. And I thought, you know, he's probably right that um, I'm not trying to do something, you know, slavishly necessarily like it was done in the mid-50s. It's like, I'm here and now, and uh, the important thing is to really try and strip it down to essentials. You know, just get rid of the clutter, and uh, I think I've been pretty successful with that. But the bathroom is really a nice space. Um, when I bought the home, there was a sliding glass window there. The sill had rotted out, so I had to do a major restoration. I removed the glass and replaced it with um, a double glazed window. You can enjoy the view of the whole garden now. The best view on the property is actually from the very back of the garden. The Golden Gate Bridge is straight ahead, and the Marin Headlands, it's just really exquisite. That's my favorite spot. Just hang out and, you know, enjoy the embrace of the native garden. Shirley, the lady I bought the house from, who unfortunately I never met, um, she did not have a car. I just parked on the street. Originally, I might have found it a hassle carrying shopping up here. Now, I never even think about it. It's just not a problem at all. As one gets older, I mean, you know, looking down the road, uh, it might not be as easy to get up the hill, but you know, I'm planning to stay in great shape, so I don't anticipate any real issues there. I've really put a great deal of myself and my labor and my creativity into the house, and for me, the great thing about it is um, it's really made me feel integrated into nature. The house has such a beautiful indoor-outdoor flow. And, you know, the volumes of glass, the views, you know, being able to dine and work outdoors. So that's cool. <laughs>